All right, it looks like it's that time. I don't want to keep you any longer than what the hour is scheduled for. So we're going to go and get go ahead and get started. Um, someone's saying they don't see the link. Okay, I will post it again so you can get the link in the chat. It is there again. Um, so my name is Lucretia Fraga. I am a um, professor in the Dreven School of Education. Um, I enjoy using technology to teach with. Um, it is one of my specializations in using instructional technology, and I teach our pre-service teachers how to use that as well. So today we're going to talk a little bit about um, how, how we can become more connected with our students in this online environment. We're all starting online. We're not sure how long that we're going to be online. And I think coming from the spring semester in where we kind of went into this emergency um, teaching and we were all doing the best we could. Um, prior to that, we, you know, we got to meet face to face with our students. We got to talk to our students. We got to know who they are, their faces and have those connections and conversations with them, um, you know, at the beginning of class, you know, the very first day of class, we kind of do the, who are you? Tell me a little bit about yourself. And, um, and we get to know each other. Sometimes it's the conversation you have with the student because they're walking in and they're carrying a book or they're talking about a movie or they're talking about something that they've done over the weekend that you feel like you can make a connection with them um, in that class. And so what we are going to do today is like, how do you do that online? How do we make those connections and, and keep those connections in a virtual setting? And so from the very beginning, and if you are at my website, and I'm gonna switch over here, let me do view. Um, you should see this link if you went to the bit.ly page. And so this is a virtual presentation that I put together for my class. And I'm going to show you exactly how we are going to do that in just a second. But building relationships within a classroom, especially in an online classroom, is really important. You know, from the very beginning, um, you know, introducing yourself and providing information about who you are, where you've come from, and some of the things that you enjoy, along with your expectations for your class, is important at the very beginning. And so... Um, let me keep switching back and forth to the presentation. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at how do we do that. And the first thing I want to show you is, first of all, the, um, the introduction that I created for myself. And again, I plan on putting this up onto my Blackboard course um, from the very beginning. And so students can at least see who am I. I'm teaching two um, lower level courses. So they're either going to be freshmen or sophomores, somewhere around there. And most of the time, these students were in high school, literally in May. So three months ago, they were in high school. Um, and so how do we get to know these students? And so I've put together this um, presentation here about myself. And I'm going to kind of move back to the beginning. And from the, and this is just a PowerPoint. So just so that you know, it's not anything fancy that I'm using. I'm simply using PowerPoint to do this. And so they're just slides I've created. And within these slides, I can click on either one of these, um, these links. And so here's an intro video I created that will give them some information about myself. So I'm not sure, can y'all hear that? Somebody give me a thumbs up. No, you can't hear that? Okay. Um, hmm, I'm not sure why. It looks paused, actually. Well, it's paused now, but hold on. I'm going to play it again. Let, tell me if you can hear it. Oop. I think it might be because you're using uh, headphones. Have you done it in the past? Not, not played like this, not shared this way. Yeah. So. Anyway, um, <clears throat> most likely it might be because of my headphones. So you have access to the site. If you'd like to look at it and listen to my wonderful video, feel free. Um, it's quite, it's like two minutes long at the most. But anyway, it gives you just a quick introduction to me, to the class that they're about to enter, um, and just tell them about what this presentation is about. So on the next slide, I just wrote up a simple, you know, short, kind of description of who I am, um, things I like, 
things that I'm passionate about and um, just a little bit more about myself. Because again, this is my introduction of myself to them. Um, and then the next thing, I actually have a short little um, survey here of Two Truths and a Lie. How many of you have ever played Two Truths and a Lie? Where you provide um, three things about yourself, um, two of them being true and one of them being a lie. And honestly, if you'd like to play right now, feel free to take your phone. If you just take your, any device that you have, um, open up the camera. And if you scan that QR code, um, you'll be able to participate in the, the poll. You could either add your name or not. And then you'll see it'll give you three choices and you can choose which one you'd like. Um, at the end of this session, I will show you what our results are. So it's pretty simple. Literally just scan the QR code and then they can go to it. Um, so again, I've le left this poll up. This, is, this poll was created through Poll Everywhere, which UIW has a site license for. And um, you can create your own poll as well and then insert it into the slide. Uh, the next part are just some of the few of my favorite things that I've created. So I've just went ahead and put some pictures of myself. Um, and I, and again, another video explaining some of those favorite things and why they're my favorite things. Um, again, gives those students a little bit more information about myself. Um, some of the things that I do besides, you know, being a professor at UIW, you know, give you just a little bit of insight of what I do. And so again, there's a short video there that explains that, which you probably can't hear again because of my headphones. But feel free, if you have access to the website, you can go watch that on your own time. Um, if you really want to know more about me. Um, I will tell you now, you know, I do own an Airstream and I love traveling. Um, I love mountain biking. I love anything geeky and technology wise. And so that's actually a Oculus headset to view virtual and augmented reality. I love musicals. Um, so any Broadway play that comes to town, I'm there. I was fortunate to see Hamilton in New York on Broadway. And so um, I really love those kinds of things. Those are my two puppies. Um, the white one is Tegan and the brown one is Keen, both rescues. So it gives you just a little bit more about who I am. Um, I love fishing. Um, this summer I learned how to fly fish and this was actually the very first fish I ever caught. Um, and then one summer, a couple of summers ago, we went fly, I mean, fishing in Lake Superior. And so it was, it was such an experience. We caught lake trout that were huge. Um, and, you know, you think about Lake Superior as being one of the great lakes and it actually looks like an ocean. It's so huge, you can't see the ends. Um, I love to garden. I have a huge garden in my backyard. And so you'll see some tomatoes that I've grown. Um, and so again, that video really just explains some of the same things that I've explained to them, to you now. Um, so on the next slide, again, some of my favorite podcasts, books, and movies. So I've provided information about things that I like to read, things I like to watch. Um, maybe we have to remember that our students um, may not watch typical TV. Um, our students are of a generation that watch things on YouTube. So when we ask students to um, give us information about themselves, you know, we want to make sure we include things that they may do because, you know, movies and TV shows, I'm sure they may watch Netflix or they may watch TV shows. I don't say TV shows. They may watch shows that are um, broadcast on YouTube. So you could put things like, you know, your favorite YouTube show or uh, favorite podcast or your favorite TikTok challenge that you've um, seen recently. And those are really popular right now with, um, our students as well. And so again, I just give some information about some of the things that I like to read and do and listen to. Um, and then I get into the expectations I have for the class itself. And so the class is really about, um, you know, what do I expect when we come to a virtual class? These are my expectations. And for some, and this, a lot of this has to do with just the the organization of the class. At the beginning of every class, typically some people like, I love the blinds I do, <laughs> Teresa. Um, typically some people, um, you know, do the class norms where students, you know, get to be a part of that, which is great. Um, we do some of that too. I try to help to create that environment within the classroom itself and learn how 
um, we can e be, each be uh, respectful of others, even on an online setting. However, there are some things that I, that are non-negotiables. And one of those things that I've realized last semester, you know, when trying to do this, I have taught classes online, you know, prior to this COVID pandemic. Um, but one of the things that's very important is that when students are in a class that they keep their cameras on. It's hard to know when somebody is engaged and is ready to participate if you don't know that they're there or you don't know that they're listening or you can't see some of the um, body language or their facial expressions. And so I do have some of these non-negotiable kinds of things where, you know, they need to log in with their first name and last name, first of all, so I know that they're supposed to be there and then um, keep their video on. Um, there are some times where I've had students say, you know, when I turn the video on, my internet connection really lags. And so that's usually a conversation I have with them one-on-one, -on -one, talking about, okay, so how are you going to help me know that you are participating? If this is an issue that you tend to um, have on a regular basis. And so we kind of negotiate something else if that tends to be a problem. Um, I do show them how to use the uh, features within Zoom, the participation features, whether they can do the thumbs up, thumbs down, um, whether they know how to raise their hand, um, things like that, we go over those in class as well. And so some of these are just those things and I'm gonna show you a quick way of how to create those also. And then finally, I give them my contact information. So again, this is a short, quick introduction to who I am. You get to know a little bit more about me, um, what I do aside from school, um, and how you can contact me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the presentation and this presentation really does go through each step slide by slide. And so the video introduction, I've created links to each one of these different slides. And so if I want to, I can go immediately to that slide and my little house here will take me back to that page. Um, and if I go forward, there's the meet the professor, you get the idea. I've created these links so that they can get through the slide quickly if they wanted to know some certain things. And so here's my introduction, or I can just use my forward and back arrows to go through the um, entire presentation. Um, again, if you'd like to uh, participate in the Two Truths and a Lie, feel free to take your phone and scan the, um, scan the QR code, and then we can look at responses here. I've got three people who think my lie is I met Lori Hernandez or I was charged by an elephant was three. Hmm. We'll come back and I'll let you know what the true answer is. All right. Um, and then the next one, again, a picture, the pictures of myself and some of my favorite things that can be anything. Um, podcast, books, movies, and then my Zoom expectations. Um, finding a quiet place, of course, is one of those things that we don't, we kind of take for granted sometimes. Um, and then if you have questions or comments for sure, feel free to put those in the chat and then the contact information. So what I do have here is I have a template for you, um, for you to use on your own. So there's no, um, uh, you know, trying to create it on your own. I mean, you can create a, a typical PowerPoint, you know, presentation on your own, but I have created a template for you. And I'm going to go right back to the um, website and I'm going to show you where those are. So if you scroll down, and I've got some other tips here on how to remain, um, to keep contact with your students and, and keep that connection move, uh, moving forward throughout the classes there. So how did I insert the QR code into the poll everywhere? I don't remember seeing that option within the software. So when you share, um, if I go to uh, poll everywhere, and I log in, one of the choices, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the actual site. And you log in, when you, when it, when you share, it gives you the option of sharing with a, um, there's my two truths in a lie. It gives you the option of sharing with the, um, there should be one that's active. Uh, with a QR code. And so all you have to do is copy and paste that into the slide. Um, here it is. 
paste that into the slide from when you're sharing, from when you're presenting. So how to present, um, share, uh, export. Hmm, I thought it gave me a choice of a QR code. If not, you know, you can always just take the link itself and go to Q create in a QR code. I have an actual um, shortcut up here that will let me do that. And you can go to any free QR code generator um, to do that. Paste the link in, it gives you the code, you copy and paste it, it's pretty simple. I'm trying to figure out where my QR code generator is at. There are advantage to that versus just using it, you know, because you know, the students log in to poll everywhere and they put in your, you know, your instructor name and then they participate in the poll that way. Is there any advantage right. to the QR? It's just a faster way of doing it that I found. So for this presentation, let me go back. For anybody to be able to participate, you know, I could also have them text my name to this and choose A, B, C, or D, or A, B, or C. Um, this, all I do is hold my phone up to it. It pops up immediately, like, like for some of you who did that. And it, um, you know, it comes up immediately. It's just a, a variety of choices to give the students. Um, some will figure out how to do this, others won't, um, it's, it's another option. I also have on, um, I have a link, if you actually click on it, it takes you to the responses as well. Um, so again, those are just some different options on it to create it. You can either create a QR code or just give them the instructions up here. I hope that was helpful. Thank you. Kathy, I hope that answered your question. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So I'm gonna go back to the, to the website and if you scroll down, this is the virtual presentation that I'm, I'm going through now. Um, and then here are the templates. So I've created, created templates. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll post the link again, Teresa. It's that bit.ly site. Um, so these are templates. Some of us use Office 365. Um, and so you'll see the instructor template, meaning this is just for you. Like if you're gonna introduce yourself and then what I like doing is I like giving this template to students before class begins, meaning that um, like I'll email students and I'll you know welcome them to the class and I've got those tips up here and I don't want to scroll too fast because sometimes that makes people sick. Um, I'll send them the welcome email just to say hello, make sure they know when the class begins, um, ask them if they have any questions about where to log in for the first day of class. And then I'll also send them that template that says, you know, during the first day of class, we're going to introduce ourselves and here's a way that you can do that. And so um, sometimes I'll create that, um, that template for them and give that, or sometimes I'll give them other ways. You know, this is one way that you can introduce yourself. If there's something else, if you want to create a short video, if you want to, you know, just write something and share it with everybody, then I'll allow them to do that as well. But what I do is give them that template just as a way. Most of the time students will complete the template because it's already there and they just have to fill in the information. And I do like going through that, you know, the first day of class just to get to know who these people are, especially in an online setting. And for students that I, I've never met before, it really does help to build that relationship. Um, I'm gonna scroll back down kind of slowly so it doesn't make you sick. Um, and so you'll see I've created an instructor template that's in Office 365. So if you're primarily a PowerPoint user um, in our Office 365 suite, that's for the instructor. And then I've given you a student one as well. Um, I've also done Google slide templates also. Um, also this should say Google template, I'm sorry. Um, K-12, because you know we are preparing teachers who are gonna be K-12 teachers. Um, the K-12 realm uses a lot of Google Classroom, a lot of the Google templates. And so um, I've created them also for them. Um, my students in particular will learn a lot more about the Google products. And so I've created those there also. And many of you may be um, also uh, familiar with the Google products as well. So those are there. So one of the things that I'm going to head back over to the presentation. So, and I'm going to, so here's the template. And so again, it kind of gives you the instructions of where to add your information to it. Click out to find more about me in this class. So this is the instructor template. All of these links are already there for you. 
um, so you don't have to worry about putting in the links. You can actually just click on it. Let me go back. You can actually just click on those um, links and then type in your own um, whatever you want. It doesn't have to be Meet the Professor. It doesn't have to be Two Truths and a Lie. It can be whatever you want them to be. So you can customize it to um, whatever it is you would like to share with your students. Um, the quick hello, again, if this is some things to consider, things that you're teaching this semester, um, where you're from, where you received your degrees from, previous teaching experiences, what you enjoy about UIW. Um, one thing you've done during quarantine, I think that's always something interesting. Um, information about what to expect in the rest of this slideshow. Um, your Meet the Professor, again, write a short intro, giving students some information about you and maybe a, a different kind of picture. Um, and then here's the two truths and a lie um, information. I also have a link and let me go to my notes. Oh, did those pop up? Nope. Where are my notes? There they are. So there's a link here that will take me, well, that didn't show up. Let me go back. Um, I have some other icebreaker kinds of um, activities. So you can do the two truths and the lie, or you can do the three, two, one. And I'm going to go back to the, um, to the website. And at the bottom, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see I've got some additional resources. And here's the icebreaker resource that I have where you can create your own icebreakers. And so it gives you some information about what students can provide, what instructors can provide and how to do that. And then here's another one, which is called a three to one framework, which you can have the students provide three things that inspire them, two places you would love to travel and one thing you accomplished during quarantine. You know, so you can make up whatever those three to one things are or have them come up with three, three things, two things and one thing, you know, what something that they want to share. So this template is here for you to use. It's just a matter of copying and pasting it and putting it into the other slideshow. I'm going to go back to the um, website and notice that there's also an additional resource for Zoom expectations. And so in creating your Zoom expectations, um, this is literally just a picture of um, a Word document I created. All I did was I put, um, made a table, I colored the background of the table, and I slid in my Bitmojis. Um, copied and pasted those directly into the document itself. Creating your own Zoom expectations is, you know, something that um, we do in different ways. Diana Benner, who has like, some great information on developing norms for your classroom, um, there's a link there to her website and it's here as well. Um, she's also given um, several examples. So I don't ever want to take credit for what she's done, but they're really good examples on how to help um, you as a faculty member um, brainstorm those norms, create them, share them, and then revisit them throughout the semester. And then the next slide gives you examples on how to create your own as well as templates. So if you don't want to start all over from scratch, all I do is click on this link. It'll take me to her site where she has given you some templates of what to do. And notice there's a template here. You can click on it, make a copy of it, and it's yours to keep. And then you can um, edit it however you want uh, for the expectations and the norms that you create for your class. Here's another one that she has without all the bitmojis. Sometimes, um, you know, we're teaching college class. Bitmoji may not be the most appropriate thing. Um, there are um, other templates that she has as well, which are more, maybe more geared towards um, college level courses or your style of teaching. Um, again, there's another one here that she has that's just black and white. So again, some great resources for you to take and begin and start in creating your own um, immediately without having to kind of recreate the wheel. So I'm gonna head back to the presentation itself and we talked about the um, other icebreaker, the three, two, one, and where you can get the template for that. And then the next one are some of your favorite, few of your favorite things. So one of the things you'll notice, and I'm gonna head back to the website real quick. 
is, and some people always ask me, how did you do that? And so I don't mind sharing my secrets. So you'll notice here, this picture of me on a bike, there is no background to it. Same thing with this picture of, the, of me fishing, the background is completely gone. And so people ask, how did you do that, right? Oh, 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 let me just show you the trick that I have up my sleeve. And so to add images of your favorite things, you know, you're just gonna find the image you wanna put there. But first, if you want to remove the background, there's a website called remove.bg. And I'm gonna head to that right now just to give you an example of how easy it is. Remove, oops, if I can type. There it is. And so literally, I go to the website, I'm going to open up and find a picture. I should have done this beforehand. Um, find my picture. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to remove the background. Hmm. Crud. I didn't have a picture. Well, you know what, I'll do this. Hmm. Where are my puppies? Uh, let's go up here. Where are they? Oh, they're there. So I'm gonna copy this picture. And I'm going to paste it right into here. And show you exactly how that happens. Hopefully this works. The problem is that the picture's not there. Hmm, cancel. Don't I have one on my desktop someplace? Sorry about that. Lucretia, at the bottom, it says you could try one of their pictures if you can't find oh. one. Awesome, thank you. I didn't even notice that. So here's a cat. And notice it just removed the background. Thank you. I never use it. I just always uploaded my own pictures. There's another one here of this person. And so you completely move the background and literally you drag it, drop it. And then all I do is hit download, put it where I want it to go. And, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like when I put it in the presentation again. So, and I'm gonna drag it into my presentation. And there it is. It's that quick of removing the background. So you can kind of get that, um, a different look to your images and make them seem, make it seem like you're really, really, you know, Tech, techie person. But anyway, that's how I did myself on the bike. And that's how I did the uh, me holding the fish. So I'm going to keep moving and give you some more of my tips and tricks. Um, so we've done that. Again, adding your video, removing the background, um, podcast, books, movies, you might want to consider also, especially if this is for your students, you know, their favorite TikTok challenge, their favorite um, YouTube channel that they listen to or watch, things like that. Um, that's where our students will get, tend to spend a lot of their time. Um, and then your expectations, you can create those yourself. I gave you links to um, the um, templates for you to use. Um, and then always providing your contact information, email address, your phone number. Um, if you use some kind of texting service, I use the Remind text service which allows you to text your students without ever having to share phone numbers. Um, so I usually stick that there as well. I've also provided a couple of extra slides here. If you wanted some, you know, some, something that's already been formatted um, for you to use. Um, and there you go. So I know that was a lot of information pretty quickly. And I've seen some of the questions in the chat, but I'm open now to questions or showing you anything that you may have a question about. Um, so feel free to stick those in the chat or to open your microphone and um, ask away. Could oh, you do you more about the remind text service? I've not heard of that before. Okay, Thanks. sure, sure. I'm going to put that. Um, 
the website is in the chat. It's called remind.com. And I will actually show you what mine looks like. I have it bookmarked up here. Um, do I use Flipgrid in my courses? Absolutely. Flipgrid is something that I highly use often as a way of, of keeping that, um, keeping that contact with people. Um, and having students explain their understanding of different concepts, um, having them talk to each other about concepts, Flipgrid is one of the things I use highly. And if you go back to my website here, um, this is just one page within the website that I've created. There's an entire link on using Flipgrid in the classroom. So if you want some more information about that. Um, what program app do you use to create your avatar? Not sure if I missed that. Okay, so I use something called Bitmoji. And so Bitmoji is, it's an app that you use on your phone to create it. You have to create an account. You get to go in and customize your face and your hair and your clothes and all that kind of stuff. And then in Chrome, so I commonly use Google Chrome, they have a Chrome extension. And literally all I have to do is copy the image. And now I'm going to go back to my presentation and paste it. And there it is. Um, and so I can go through adding the Bitmoji um, extension in Chrome and quickly look up, you know, uh, school things. And it'll bring up anything school related. If I want, um, I don't know, teaching. What I like also about it is that it automatically, whatever word you type in, it will put it at the top of it as well. So it'll customize it or it'll bring in, you know, bitmojis that have already been created for those kinds of things. If it's a birthday one, um, you can create those as well and send those. It's pretty fun. Um, students, I think students like it. I've never heard anybody say they haven't. So um, although I'm waiting for the time when a student tells me, oh, that's so old. So <laughs> we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, is the Remove Background app free? Yes, it is completely free. Um, doesn't require you to even log in. Doesn't require you just drag and drop. If you want to sign in and, and log in and sign up, I think it stores, you have the option of storing so many um, images. Um, there is some pricing for more advanced features. If you like, um, I've not really needed any of that. So I've always stuck with the free account um, and, and used it that way. I will say that there is still an edit feature within um, that's free that you can add, you know, a blur to it if you'd like. Um, you can add colors. You can add, you can put yourself in a different location. Um, so if I want to put myself in the snow, I can put myself in the snow. Um, I can put myself wherever, you know, they have these um, backgrounds for, which is pretty cool. Um, if for some reason, let's say they did, it didn't um, take out everything I wanted, I have the ability to erase certain things. So let's say, I don't know, I can erase that, it would be fine, or I can go back and restore it, and it will come back. And it'll restore actually any parts of the picture, the original picture that I want. So just some neat tricks that you can do with the Remove BG um, website itself. And then of course, download it. Um, I really like this site. I just found this pretty much maybe this summer, um, end of May, April. Um, and it was, it's, been, it's been really nice to use. Um, let me see, what app her and create avatar? Um, let me see, amazing. Welcome, you're welcome, Dipti. Cornucopia, thank you. Um, can we call up our ebook while on Zoom so students can follow along? Thanks. Mm, I'm not sure what you're referring to, Bill, when you say ebook. Are you referring to like the textbook? Um, ah, yes, yes, the textbook. Yes, I mean, anything that you can put on your screen and then share your screen, um, students will be able to see. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, did that I'm, help? I'm in the beginner stage at this, all of this stuff. Oh, I, I get it. I get it. Um, so, and I know that the Center for Teaching and Learning has 
lots of great resources for um, for those still beginning and looking for some um, great ways to interact with their students. Yeah, see, I'll put it to you this way. I've been teaching at Incarnate Word for 15 years and taught over 22 different classes. And I've never, ever taught a, a online class before. So this was very new for me. I can imagine. I think there, there are more um, and more faculty who are in your same situation. And I think we're all learning together um, yeah. in that respect. And so I appreciate you coming. And I hope I was able to, to give you just a little bit of information to, um, to help you along the way. Yes, you did. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else that has any questions? Um, again, you have, did you create the PowerPoint theme yourself or do you use or subscribe templates? Oh, good question. So I will share another trick I have. Um, we'll move this one out of the way. Uh, slides mania. If you don't know Slides Mania, it's a good resource and I'll stick that in the chat. Um, what I find is that um, I will take or use one of these slide templates because they'll allow you to download, you know, all of these templates. And then I kind of, you know, um, modify them and uh, for what I want them to do. So yes, the slide template that I used was something that somebody started but I readjusted it and I modified it. I changed the colors and pictures up on my own as well. <laughs> You're welcome, Julie. Um, slides Mania, and then there's other one called Slides to Go, Slides Go, I think that's it. Yeah, so I'll put that one in the chat as well. Again, they have, um, if you're using um, PowerPoint or if you're using Google Slides, either one of those um, is a good place to start in just finding some good templates. Any other questions? Well, I'm going to leave it on my contact information. And if you have any questions, feel free to call, feel free to email. Um, obviously, you don't have the remind app, but <laughs> I will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Can we get a list of the websites? Uh, Gail, which particular websites are you referring to? You've listed a lot of websites, and I've been writing down as fast as I can, but uh, my, <laughs> I, I, I know I've missed some of them. So is there some place where there's just a list of all of the websites for we who don't have fast hands? So I can add the ones that are in the chat here, the Slides Mania. That would be wonderful. Uh, and so, I mean, it'll take me two seconds to publish that and you will have access to that um, as soon as- um, On your, on your website? Correct, it's going right okay. there under additional resources. Slides super, go. Super, super. Um, have you used something like this on a weekly announcement? So I, Elsa, I have not myself but I've seen many teachers who do, who create like a weekly template for what they're gonna do for the week. And it's kind of this slideshow that they, um, they create. Uh, one of the things that I've learned recently um, and I've started to use a little bit more is being able to adjust a PowerPoint into whatever, um, I don't wanna say template, but whatever size you want. So I'm gonna go back to the Slides Mania page and if you notice, they've created digital notebooks. And this is still all just PowerPoint, but they've created the slide. Instead of it being landscape, they changed the size to be portrait. And so now you can create, and this again is all in PowerPoint, um, and all of the tabs that they've created. So when you click on it, it'll take you to assignments. When you click on it, it takes you to the the agenda and so there are so many different templates that are out there now that you can use um, to help create the you know what you're using and so slides mania is a really good resource to help you in in kind of that weekly template that you were thinking about the announcements page um, just so many good resources on that one page i'm trying to make sure i get to all of the uh, questions in the link. Um, so let me put the, 
Yes. Um, this is Elsa again. Um, and the Hi, reason, Elsa. The, the reason I ask about um, that because I, I mean, I just love your welcome page and that's so great, but I would, um, as I'm adding new things to the course, man, I almost feel like, okay, you've made it so easy and then it looks so great and interactive and wonderful and the students get all excited and they go, wow, I can't wait for this class. And then, you know, there's not, you know, there's not other stuff throughout the class that's, you know, like this and has color and I love the color and all of that. So that's why I thought, well, you know, maybe I could do something like this on the weekly announcements. Here's what we're going to do this week. And rather than it be a letdown for students to go, wow, it started out great, but now it's all this content and stuff, you know? Well, almost like false advertisement, right? Look, right. Woo! Right. Or, right. Or I, I refer it to the diet method. We all start out great, right? And then, you know, two to three weeks in, we're all kind of like start cheating a little bit. Um, yeah, so I honestly, um, Elsa, I really do like a lot of the slide templates that kind of keep me from moving forward and feedback that I get from my students is kind of motivating me as well to make sure that when I'm providing my agenda or when I'm providing any kind of my presentations or things that I at least try to keep within a template that I've been using um, or try different templates out. You know, that Slides Mania, like I said, is a really good resource um, to use to help you with the, the appearance and the aesthetics of what that looks like. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, so here's a question that has to do with Terry's question about Blackboard, uh -huh. kind of related to that. So knowing yeah, that we're going to Canvas in about a year or so, um, do you, can you create all this, like say on Google or somewhere else, and then link it to Blackboard so you're not recreating all of this again next year yeah. with Canvas? So personally, okay. that's what I do. And again, because I work with those who are going to be K-12 teachers, I tend to do a lot of my things within Google. You can still do some of these things within the Office 365 suite as well. Um, but what I tend to do is, um, is use the Google products and, and then I embed them into Blackboard or to Canvas. So for example, um, if this is my presentation, instead of me uploading it to Blackboard and wanting to make changes to it and that because having to download it and then uploading a new version, I tend to leave my... Um, version of PowerPoint within slides or Google Slides. And then I use the embed feature um, to share that. So if I share this by copying the link, I can copy that link and stick that directly into, um, into Blackboard, or I can embed it in the same way by getting an embed code um, from PowerPoint as well. And so everything that I do then stays within the PowerPoint and the only thing that's in Blackboard is a link. And no matter how many times I change um, the PowerPoint, whether it's in PowerPoint or it's in Google Slides, the link doesn't change, but the content can. Does that help? So I tend to, to load my Blackboard course with links and not necessarily a bunch of documents, um, the hard documents. So if they click on a link to a, a Word document, it's gonna go to OneDrive where they have to download it. Well, if I, or to Google Docs where they download it. But if I wanna make a change to that, I open the document within um, Word or within PowerPoint, make my changes there, the link stays the same. And so now in Blackboard, I don't have to go change you know, upload a different document just because I've made a couple of changes to that one document. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's fantastic. So just, so just a couple of tips and tricks that I found. So regardless if I'm in Blackboard, regardless if I'm in um, Canvas or whatever LMS that we're using, um, I'm not having to recreate the things that I'm doing to download and upload and download and upload. Um, it just stays because all I'm doing is sharing the links, okay? I saw some more questions in the chat. I want to make sure I get to those. Um, Terry, I, 
I hope that answered your question about Blackboard modules. Um, do most of your students watch Zoom on their phone or a laptop? Does it matter what they use? I will say, you know, within my course, Tim, that, um, you know, I do teach an instructional technology course. And so that class, I require them to have some kind of laptop because we do learn how to make a lot of things. Um, even within my lower level classes of foundations or um, of education, I ask students to either be using a laptop or a tablet. Um, and I tell them it's gonna be extremely difficult for them to try and do it all on their phone. Now, if all they have is a phone, then obviously I'm gonna want them to participate in some way or another. Um, and so this way, the um, uh, we can make some kind of arrangement between that person and myself instead of it, you know, being kind of weird. So um, again, I do require in my syllabus, it says, you know, this is a technology driven class. Um, you will be required to, you know, to use a laptop or a tablet at all times. So um, that's something that I do put into my syllabus. Um, will you also be available to copy the Blackboard? Oh, so Terry, I think that was, um, Oh, Terry's saying you'll also be available, will also be able to copy any content you have in Blackboard into Canvas. Um, let me see if there's any other questions. Any advice on watching short videos together in Zoom? You know, I honestly, I like using Edpuzzle um, for a place to watch short videos um, and have students respond. So it's not like we, I turn on the video, everybody sits back and we listen and we talk about it together. Again, I'll put a link to the Edpuzzle. Um, and if you're not familiar with Edpuzzle, I do have on my website. Um, oh, let me publish this real quick. Um, a link to Edpuzzle. And view. A link to Edpuzzle here. It's a way of assigning short videos and then embedding some um, questions within the video. Um, what I did one last semester, I guess it was in the spring, um, is I would ask the students to watch a short video during a synchronous class and have them answer those questions. I can then go in and see their responses and then we have a, um, a conversation about that. So it's not necessarily we're all watching it at the same time. They're watching it on their own, using their own headphones, using that and still responding. And then we come back together and we talk about it there. Um, did that help, Paul? So can you share desktop, can you share desktop to watch videos? Yes, Shauna, same thing. Um, if you want to use an interactive document that several students could edit at the same time, what would you recommend? Google Docs, Google Forms, or any other software? I, I honestly, I use Google Docs. Um, I find it um, the synchronicity of the document itself is, is very easy for students to collaborate on one document. I've also found that if I, I add my questions to it immediately, and sometimes I'll put a grid or a form together, um, not a grid, a table, I'm sorry, and I have um, an expectation where everybody is supposed to respond. So maybe it's group one responds here, group two. Then when they're all collaborating on one document, it's not... Um, it's not, it doesn't become kind of crazy because sometimes you can see this document going up and down and people are kind of confused as to where they're supposed to respond. So I kind of leave boxes in where I expect certain people to respond. Lourdes, did that help? Suleiman is asking, poll every competition mode is only only works synchronous. Is there a similar for asynchronous? So poll everywhere. I will say, um, if you're trying to do competition mode, um, yeah, you wouldn't want to do that. But the poll everywhere that I put in for two truths and a lie, it's live right now. I, I'm, and it's not necessarily synchronous. So I've left that open for anybody to respond to. I can put an end date on it and as to when that can close. So you could use it synchronously or asynchronous. How about if we use Edpuzzle with videos? I'm trying that out for the first time. Do you know, can we just add links to Blackboard for those? Absolutely, Dipti. So again, so there's the link to my Edpuzzle piece. Um, it gives you some more information on how to use Edpuzzle. Um, back in March, I, cre I did an entire workshop on Edpuzzle. 
Um, but if you're wanting some more information, you can click on that link from my website and to get there. Um, and yes, all I do is put the link into Edpuzzle. They click on the link and it takes them to Edpuzzle to finish the, the to do the activity and then we come back. Um, let's see. Uh, I think those are all the questions, unless anybody else has anything else for me. Um, do you log in to Google Drive with your UIW credentials? No, I use a Gmail account to log into my Google Drive. Um, I do know many of people who do use their, um, their, their UIW credentials to log into UIW, I mean, to Google, um, but it's not necessary. I just create my own Gmail account that I use for that. Do we have the Edpuzzle Unlimited license? That I don't know. We'd have to ask um, well, Susan or Kathy. We'll have it, we'll have it um, any day now. But oh. we, we are getting it. Yeah, we'll let, people, oh. we'll let people know when it's live. Awesome. Thank you, Kathy and Adela. Uh, anything else that I can answer? We've got about nine minutes left, and I want to make sure your time was spent very well. Well, I appreciate you all taking the time to come out today um, and um, um, listen to some virtual introductions and how to, to connect more with your students online. Hey, you have one more question, Lucretia. Oh, thank you for helping me. Yeah. Where's that question? It's from Ronaldo, and it says, for students who are abroad, are there any challenges in connecting some of the tool to some of the tools? Um, I can't say that I've had that um, an issue with that. I did teach an online class um, for UIW. I guess it was the fall of 18, fall of 19. And I had a particular student who had to travel to Japan for work. And he was able to get all of the links and documents and some of the same things that I've talked about today um, while he was in Japan. So I know it works from Japan. I'm not sure about every other country. Any other questions? Is it better to share desktop to share a video in Zoom, or do you from from PowerPoint hyperlink? Um, it just depends on what it is. You know, for me, if I'm wanting them to watch the video for um, because I'm going to ask some kind of comprehension question, then I may send them to Ed Puzzle to do that. Um, if it's something short, sweet, maybe less than a minute, we may watch it all together. Um, but for the most part, I, ten, I typically send them to Edpuzzle so that I can do some comprehension questions with them. And it will be the same thing if you just click on the link on PowerPoint, that if you just go to your desktop to internet, uh, Chrome or whatever, and, and click on the link, is the same? I don't know, I, so, I thought people were having issues with that. So it depends on, sometimes it depends on the browser that students are using, and it depends on if you're giving them access to your PowerPoint with that link. Okay. Um, and where the video is hosted. So if it's hosted on YouTube, usually that's not a problem. If it's hosted within, you know, UIW and you're only giving them access to only those who have access to UIW network, you know, the Office 365, then of course they have to be a student within, within UIW to access that. It sometimes it's when you're sending them outside that they may have trouble with that. Um, typically, what I do is if I'm in Chrome, I will do open a new cogni incognito window, and that helps me to see what other people outside will see on anything that I am displaying. So it, it kind of gives me an opportunity to check all my links and gives me an idea of what other um, students or other people will see from any of the presentations as far as links go um, and where it takes them to make sure that they work. Did that help? Yep, thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see. What was the lie? Terry wants to know. Okay, we will send you back to the icebreaker. And where is my link? Here we go. Oh, awesome. So we got some more participants. So the lie is I had front row seats to Garth Brooks. 
Um, I actually had second row seats to Garp Brooks. I did meet Lori Hernandez actually at UIW through the, um, oh, what was that? The, oh, I can't remember the event that was there. And then in about, I guess it was 2008, when I was working at UTSA, I had the opportunity of traveling to South Africa for a project. And we went through Mahalo, and then we went through um, uh, uh, the, it's called Kruger National Park. And it's literally a national park, and you can see elephant and lions and um, antelope and warthogs and all of these things, literally like you're driving through the zoo. Uh, giraffes, you know, there's giraffes in the corner. Well, we pulled through and we saw, you know, some elephants kind of in the distance. And the next thing we know, we see these, the elephants are getting closer. What we didn't know was there was a tree there, you know, and the road is, you know, it's just a typical road. Um, the tree was probably 25 yards away from us. On the other side of that tree behind it was a baby elephant. And so the mom was coming and thought we were <laughs> in the way. And so it started flapping its ears. And we're like, oh, look how cute. It's flapping its ears. Had no idea why. And all of a sudden, it starts lifting its nose and kind of howling at us. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> this isn't right. I was not driving. So remember, in South Africa, the driver's side is on the, on the other side, right? I was in the passenger seat in the back at the windows and the elephant was over there and here it comes and I'm like go somebody needs to go go now and sure enough this elephant is coming as soon as it got to that tree we were like we were gone by then so yes I was charged by an elephant <laughs> oh so and that's always a fun story to tell as well um it was the Salvation Army event that's right Elda thank you thank you for helping me um any other questions that I can help? We've got three minutes left. Um, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. I'm glad I could help. Yes, the session is being recorded. Um, that I understand, Adela, correct? Yes, that's correct. And then the question is, where can we view it again? It'll be on our web, uh, on our YouTube channel. Yeah, I, I just put the link in the chat. It's a YouTube channel, YouTube site. So Teresa is asking if I um, subscribe to a blog or a newsletter of some sort. Quite honestly, you know, I get a lot of my information from Twitter. Uh, I do, let me open up my Twitter account. I do follow a lot of different places. So whether it's, I don't know, a lot of it has to do with instructional technologies. Sometimes, you know, a lot of it is K-12 driven, but I find ways to move that into the, the higher ed setting. Um, if you just go to twitter.com and type in pedagogy, type in teaching, um, you know, these are the folks that I follow on a regular basis. And quite honestly, I would love to take credit for all of these wonderful ideas, but honestly, I beg, borrow, and steal a lot of them. One person that I will say that I can recommend, Caitlin Tucker, she's amazing um, to follow if you are on Twitter. Um, and let me think of my other people who I share. Caitlin Tucker's one, Leslie, um, God, what's Leslie's last name? Mm, I can't think of her name right now. She's another one that I follow immensely. Um, and honestly, I really get a lot of my, my information from here. I will say if you're on Facebook, the Facebook groups, um, I like the Facebook Canvas user groups. I know we're going to be moving to Canvas. They have some amazing um, information there um, that I can that you can um, look to as well. Um, there's also um, I'm going to kind of show a secret, Kathy. Um, but these are two. Um, so teaching in higher ed as well as Cult of Pedagogy. Those are two resources that I really like. Um, teaching in Higher Ed, she has a podcast. I can't say her last name. Um, and I don't wanna butcher it, but she does a lot with using technology, um, 
just teaching in general and podcast. Um, and this is who that person is. Bonnie Stokowiak. I think that's how you say it. Awesome. She's a faculty member someplace in the Northeast. I want to say University of Washington has a great uh, podcast and blog um, that I follow regularly. Um, and then the other one is uh, Jennifer Gonzalez, and she has the Cult of Pedagogy um, that um, she has, a, again, a blog, a podcast, and it really talks about, I feel like I'm a teacher nerd, um, about a lot of things teaching. And sometimes she gears a lot of her things to K-12, but again, I kind of take hers and kind of figure out how I can use it in my classroom as well. So I hope that answers all the questions for you today. It is, we have met our time um, and it was good seeing you. I look forward to seeing everybody at some point in time, maybe in person, maybe through a screen, but here's the high five to all of y'all. Y'all have a good afternoon. Okay. Bye. 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 Thanks, Lucretia. Thanks, Lucretia. You're welcome.